Okay, first things first. The grand unveiling of the new floor. Finally done. And I know each one of these tiles on a first name basis because I laid and grouted every single one of them. I like it. This garage is a disaster. I think it needs to be the next project. Hi, guy. Meanwhile, so I came in here to get the coffee out. Simple enough, right? And look at what I found. Some bird crawled in my fridge and died. I think this requires investigating. Now mind you, I do keep other dead things over here on this side. Like there's a bunch of dead chickens, some dead pigs, some dead moo cows, and some dead fish. But these are all to feed homeless dogs, right? People don't actually eat this stuff, do they? Hmm. Well, according to everything I read, if you cook these things, they're supposed to be actually edible. I think we're going to have to find out. Oh yeah, a little extra touch I added at the end of the counter. A drop leaf. So when I need extra space, like incoming groceries, it's available. When I don't need it, it's out of the way. And with the addition of a stool, it turns it into an eat-in kitchen. So the dead beast has been washed and waxed and done a full cavity search and it's ready to go. I'm following a recipe by Hyla Johnson. Uh, link to her video will be down below. We gotta stuff it with stuff. Which entails just throwing stuff in there. I'm using some onion, some celery, uh, I believe she used some parsley. I didn't have any fresh, so I, I'm ignoring that part. Then we're supposed to inject it with embalming fluid. Let's we'll see how that goes. So this is a half and half mixture of chicken broth and butter, which we lace with a little bit of Tabasco, just because Hyla says so. mighty hypodemic nurdle and we fill it up Ooh, no not there maybe there yeah Maybe I'm ready for his career as a taxidermist. We'll see. That ought to be enough. And according to Hyla, you can use the rest of it for basting. And next we tie it up so it can't get away from us. Let's see if I can duplicate how Hyla did it. Or not. Around there, and then down around here. 
and with your other three hands up around the wingies and then we're supposed to tie it together on this end so far so good now I need somebody to put their finger on the knot Right? <laughs> she made it look easier than this. Finally. And now we set the thing in the roasting pan on the budget priced roasting rack for the cheapskate. Get in there. And then we preheat the oven to 325, which I forgot to do. Back in a minute. Meanwhile, I've taken all those nasty innards out of the beast and I'm boiling them to finally make some of my mom's old fashioned giblet gravy, which I haven't had for a few years. You throw in some chopped onion, a bay leaf or two, and you let it cover it and let it sit there and simmer for a couple hours until the meat is starting to fall off of the neck bone. Then while we're waiting for the oven to heat up, give it a little finishing touch. Just a little EVOO all over the outside of it. I will use the butter mixture, but I thought I'd do this instead, just because I'm ornery. Okay. And a little salt. I'd say that'll do for now. And a little pepper. Mr. Oven is ready any day now. Alrighty, we put the beast in. Heavy little bugger. And that's it. Bye, bird. Now, while we are enduring two and a half hours of smelling a turkey cooking, there are some other things that we can get out of the way. But I would like to point out that the boss is watching. So you all behave, you hear? I'm going to be doing a sweet potato. And I don't want to use just butter on it, so I'm going to invent something. We'll see how it goes. I'm using a half a stick of butter, and I'm going to add a quarter of a cup, no, a half a cup, of brown sugar to it. And just because I can, about a quarter of a cup of maple syrple. And this isn't that nasty old American stuff either. This is the real deal. Cuts will appreciate this. Where's the label sticker? Focus. Good stuff. Now I'm going to heat it all up and see what happens. The objective here is to come up with something that works more or less like a soft spread when I cool it back down so I can glop it all over that potato. Now it remains to be seen whether or not this will work. 
Now I've let it simmer to where it's all pretty well mixed together. And just because I want to, and I can, I'm adding some cinnamon to it. About that much, however much that is. I could add a little more. Okay, now, that is as done as I'm going to get it. Look down here. Pour it into a little appropriate bowl. And then we put it in the fridge and see if it'll actually set up. Which is what I'm hoping for. Ouch! Ow! Hot! Look down here. And pay attention. Tyler says to baste the thing every half hour or so. So who am I to argue with her? She knows what she's doing and I don't. Back into the crematorium, and we'll go do something else. Next on the agenda, I'm doing a variation of the old-fashioned classic green bean casserole. Except I didn't want green beans, so I'm using asparagus. And instead of cream of mushroom, I'm using cream of asparagus soup, and I'm adding my own mushrooms. We can go ahead and get the asparagus pre-cooked and get this all ready to go in when it's time for it. Get on with it. Now I'm guessing that if you cut these into roughly bean-sized pieces, it ought to work. And this is part of the fun of it. Just out guessing your food. I say they're special. The old cut off ends, you save those for the stock pot. Get in here. Good enough. Close enough to bean size for me. I might even throw some garlic into this just because I want to. So we're basically all set. I'll go ahead and pre-cook the asparagus and then we can assemble it later. Alrighty, next on the agenda the fixings for the stuffing. Which have to include sausage. Get that started. And once it sizzles a little, we start breaking it up. about now is probably a good time to throw in something resembling a trinity. Some onion, some celery, and some garlic. 
no peppers because I don't have any peppers. And once the sausage is brown nicely, turn the heat down, cover it, just let it sit there and think for a few minutes. And yes, I'm cheating on the stuffing. Fresh, right out of the box. I didn't feel inspired to make two batches of cornbread. So, we'll go over here. Shut the heat off. Ouch, 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 ouch. And we'll throw this in a dish and stick it in the oven with the cornbread. Let it crisp up a little. Alrighty, time to assemble the casserole. Down to about the last 10-15 minutes for the turkey. Get this mixed up. Throw in about that much rosemary. A little bit of salt. pepper just because. Some mushrooms. Let me say some of those or something else. Looks like an awful. And the asparagus. Mix this all. And we supposedly throw in half of the onion thingies. Yep. All right. That looks halfish. Glob it all together. Now this will go in the oven for a half hour, which conveniently can happen the instant the turkey comes out. And now for the grand entry of the prima donna itself. The bird! And that casserole can just go right back in here. Another 30 minutes. Doesn't look too shabby. to cover it and ignore it for a half hour. Meanwhile, on another front, make the cornbread. Start with an egg. Beat the crap out of it. Add the milk. Two cups of cornmeal. Well, that's about a cup. About another cup. A little bit of baking powder. About yay. A little bit of baking soda. Maybe a half teaspoon. A quarter of a cup of oil. This is a secret family recipe. Right off of the Martha White cornmeal bag. Works well. 
Alrighty. That's it. Mix it all together. that's over yonder in the oven. It's in the convection oven with about a table, tablespoon of butter in it, getting itself warmed up. So the turkey is ready to be butchered, the cornbread is done, potato is about to come out, all we've got to do is make the gravy. Take all of the pan drippings, take about a quarter of a cup of the grease off of the top of it. Oh shut up. Add two cups of flour to that. Why is that hole so small? One cup. And we proceed to make a roux. One is nice and lumpy. We start adding the combination of the juices from the bird broth that was left after cooking up the giblets. And when it suddenly occurs to us that it was only supposed to be a half a cup of flour, we take out the other stuff, leave a half a cup, and pick up where we left off. that roux was starting to look awfully thick. Duh! And while it's developing, we add in all of the neck meat and all the giblets that we already cooked and had cut up. And we add in the rest of the liquid. Just let it simmer. And at long last, the reward is worth every bit of the effort. The casserole is much better with asparagus, and this is probably how I'll make it from now on. The turkey is probably the juiciest and most tender that I have ever had. The spread for the sweet potato worked exactly like I wanted it to. Everything is just yum, uh, if you'll excuse me.